All right, what's going on, y'all? Welcome back. Uh, today we got a first full round mock. Now, the last one of the last one of these that we did was two, three weeks ago. Um, but this is post free agency. We have had a lot happen uh, within uh, the past week. Uh, free agency officially started last Monday. Uh, today is Monday, so exactly one week ago. Um, official stuff started on Wednesday. However. Started agreeing to deal, stuff like that. Um, if you watched my video last week, I was kind of talking about some things here and there um, because of things rolling in as I was recording. I've had a lot. We don't have to make a Justin Fields trade to start out this video. Justin Fields was traded to my Pittsburgh Steelers for a sixth round pick. It is a conditional pick, however, though. Um, it can turn into a fourth round pick. This is for next year, by the way. Um, it's a 2025 sixth round pick, conditional uh, if he plays 51 percent, I'm pretty sure it was the number 51 percent of snaps uh, in 2025, then it will turn into a fourth round pick instead. Um, and we've had anything in between that you can think of. Desmond Ritter traded, Sam Howell traded, Kenny Pickett traded. I mean, everything. A lot of things have happened. Um, guys cut like Michael Thomas, Mike Williams, um, just to name two. Um and and people sign in places that you didn't expect Saquon to the Eagles, um, stuff like that. And there's still a lot of guys out there. There's still a lot of guys that can make impacts out there. Uh, like I said, uh, uh, Mike Williams, um, uh, Justin Simmons, Connor Williams, uh, you know, a lot of guys, a lot of guys, Xavier and Howard. There's a lot of guys out there. Um, but how I'm going to do this is, is I have it on my phone. I do have a – I'm not going to show you that because you can't. You won't load. I mean, you won't be able to see it really. But I have a list uh, from NFL.com, uh, you know, breaking down guys, I mean, teams um, and guys that they've signed. So as I come across a team, I will talk about those things. Um, and I will try to still wrap this video up, though, um, you know, within, you know, 50 minutes or less, because usually that's about somewhere around uh, how long my mock draft videos are. But let's get right to it. We got the Bears on the clock at one still. And it is officially Caleb Williams' uh, season in Chicago as their quarterback. To wrap some things up, they've been very aggressive. Uh, they went out and they signed DeAndre Swift to be their new running back one. They went out and they traded a fourth-round pick to Los Angeles Chargers in exchange for Keenan Allen. Um, they also um, went out and got uh, Coleman Shelton from the Rams, I'm pretty sure, center. Um, uh, they went and got Ryan Bates. They re-signed Dante Pettis. Um, they went and signed Gerald Everett to a two-year contract to bring him in that tight end room with Cole Komet. They re-signed Jalen Johnson to a huge deal. They went out and got Kevin Byard and Jonathan Owens also. Um, so I think Chicago is in a prime position now to take Caleb Williams at one, and then I think they can go uh, a few different ways at nine. Um, if they if they stay at nine, y'all know if y'all been watching my videos, I've uh, flirted with the idea of them trading up from nine to somewhere else. Um, but this is where the draft starts here at number two. Um, you've got the uh, Washington Commanders who have signed about every position you can think of, at least one guy there. Marcus Mariota, Austin Eckler, uh, Reson Jameson Crowley, Zach Ertz, Nick Allegretti, um, Tyler Biotis, Dorrance Armstrong, Cleveland Fair, Dante Fowler, uh, uh, Frankie Louvu, Bobby Wagner, Michael Davis, Jeremy Chin. They even signed Brandon McManus and a long snapper. I mean, they are literally missing a punter, an interior defense, a defense alignment, and that's it. Um, but Washington's also in a prime position now to take the the quarterback that they want. Um, but I've been this this idea has been on my mind a lot recently, and I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it, and I. I you know, if this is your first time coming across my channel or if you've been watching my videos, please tell me what you think about this in the comments because I've asked people and no one has responded to me. And the one person that did says, I'm crazy for this, but I'm going to trade out of two. I am. And it's going to be one of these two teams that comes up. And this is why I'm going to trade out to. I'll explain. It's going to be Arizona or Los Angeles. In my opinion, Jaden Daniels, and Drake May are about on the same level. I do think Drake May is slightly better, but I do still think that Jane Daniels deserves to go to the top three. 
But I think that if you're Washington sitting at two, if you really, really like Drake May, you take him here. However, if you want Jaden Daniels, which I've, there's been that rumor floating around that they might want Jaden Daniels, I would trade out of here. And here's what I'm going to do um, to make this video more interesting, at least. I think Los Angeles will be more aggressive with it. However, what I'm going to do is I'm going to trade four and 27 um, from Arizona to move up to two to ensure that in Arizona you get your biggest need in Marvin Harrison Jr. Um, Arizona, just just for, for a check here, they've done some stuff out in free agency too. They've been a little aggressive. They went out and, like I said, traded for Desmond Ritter, which was interesting. Um, they traded Rondell Moore, so I think that means even more that they need a receiver. They went and signed DJ Dallas to be their backup running back. They signed Chris Moore. Um, they signed some O-line guys, uh, including Jonah Williams, who's going to be their left tackle now, um, which they move on to from DJ Humphreys. They signed Jonah Williams, book in tackles now, kind of, well, kind of, uh, with, with Jonah Williams and Paris Johnson Jr. So tackles definitely out of the question for them now. Um, and they also went out and got Justin Jones, Bilo Nichols, uh, Bilal Nichols, sorry, uh, Resign Chris Barnes, um, went out and got Mac Wilson, Sean Murphy Bunting. Um, but there's still a lot of needs, in my opinion, in Arizona. I mean, I mean, they need a lot. They, they need another receiver. They need corners still. Uh, they need a lot. Um, but you be aggressive. You go get Marvin Harrison Jr., potentially the best wide receiver prospect we've seen in years. Yeah, you give up four and 27, but I think it's worth it. And then this is why I think it's worth it for, for Washington because then at three, the New England Patriots, I'm still going to go Drake May. So if you're Washington, you still get your guy in Jaden Daniels, but you also just picked up 27 when you need a lot of things. Um, I know they went and signed a lot of guys, like I said, but you need a lot of things still. Um, but yeah, but going back here to three real quick, Drake May comes to New England. Um, another guy, another quarterback traded for a bag of chips was Mac Jones to Jacksonville. Um, but, but, uh, uh, you know, on top of that, the New England Patriots have also done a lot. They went and got Jacoby Brissett. Um, I do think that there is a possibility that if you're New England, you could look out of three and you could, you know, you can roll Jacoby Brissett out there for a year with, with Bailey Zappi being the backup. Why not? But I just think drink, bringing in Drake May is just such a big. I I am I'm big on Drake May. I really am. I'm big on all three of these guys. Um, but I really do like Drake May. I really really do. Um. But yeah, you bring in Drake May. Um, some things that they have done. Jacoby Brissett. Um, they went out and got Antonio Gibson, which I thought was an interesting move. They re-signed Kendrick Bourne. They went out and signed KJ Osborne. They went out and re-signed Jalen Rager. Um, kind of having that receiver room back. Uh, with Demario Douglas. Um, they went and re-signed Hunter Henry. They went and signed Austin Hooper. Uh, a big one was that they went and re-signed Michael Winu. I think that was really, really big. They brought in Chooks Akora for from New England, uh, uh, from Pittsburgh. Um, I think there's potential that maybe he goes and plays left tackle because they do need a left tackle, really. Or is a Winu playing left tackle? They, uh, I don't know. Um, Anthony Jennings, they re-signed. They re-signed Josh Uche, which is two big guys. Uh, they re-signed Christian Ellis. And then they went out and they got um, Sion Takitaki and Armand Watts uh, while also uh, giving the tag to uh, Kyle Duggar. Um, and then uh, I, I already talked about Washington just a minute ago. But, yeah, they go get their quarterback, Jaden Daniels. And then now you also have 27, um, you know, I, I have them down as like needing a tackle, needing a guard, needing a safety, needing corner. And I think there is going to be some solid guys at all of those positions available for them at 27. Now, Los Angeles, after moving on from Keenan Allen, I think I'm going to – I still want to move out of the spot, I think. I do still think that they're going to want to brought Bowers really bad, but now that you move Keenan Allen – I think it's crucial that you got to get a receiver. But here's my thing. Here's my thing. And this is what I've flirted with trying to do a two-round mock, a uh, full-round mock, is that if I still make this trade that I've been liking a lot with five and nine in, in Chicago, but see, but Chicago just traded for Keenan Allen, so I don't think that they would they would do it now. I don't think it's as realistic. 
I think I'm going to have to stick and pick Malik Neighbors here. Who's interested in trading? Minnesota. I know that Minnesota. Oh, that's another big thing that I forgot to mention. Minnesota also has uh, traded with, a, a, a not Cleveland, a Houston to acquire pick 23. Um, so they got to have two first-round picks. I do think there's a chance that they move up. But I still think there's a chance that Denver moves up. But the thing is, my thing is, is I don't, I, I still can't see J.J. McCarthy on top of it. I don't think I can. He He's in a weird spot with, like I was with Will Levis last year where I couldn't decide, is he going top 10 like there's pr- projections of? Or is he going to the second round? Ultimately, I decided that he was he was a second rounder, which I was kind of leaning towards the whole time, and I was correct. Just saying, just saying, just saying. Um, but I'm still leaning towards JJ McCarthy being a back end first round guy. I really am. I I'm gonna have to take Malik Neighbors here at five with the Chargers. I think that's gonna have to be the pick. Now, this puts an interesting spot for the Giants because they don't need a tackle anymore. They went out and got uh, Jermaine Illuminor. Oh, which, by the way, sorry, uh, my fault to the uh, disrespecting the Chargers. That's my bad. The Chargers, uh, while trading Keenan Allen, uh, went out and got Gus Edwards because they also lost Austin Eckler. They went out and got Will Disley and Hayden Hurst. So maybe they don't need Brock Bowers anymore. I have, I didn't I knew that they got Hayden Hurst, but I forgot that they got Will Disley too. Um, they just went out today and signed Bradley Bozeman. Um, they signed Puna Ford, Troy Dye, Denzel Perryman, and uh, re-signed Aloe Gilman. Um, and then the Giants, sorry, the Giants. Um, they've had some interesting moves too. Um, they went outside Drew Locke, which I thought was a, an interesting move. Um, they went outside Devin Singletary to be their running back after they lost Saquon. They went and got Isaiah McKenzie, Jermaine Illuminor, like I just uh, alluded to, um, and also John Runyon. Uh, so I think a guard is a really big need here for the Giants, um, mainly that left guard position. And then they had the huge move going and trading a second and a, uh, a fifth. Um, yeah, a second and a fifth for Brian Burns. Um, and then they also signed Jalen Mills. Uh, so for New York, I think in play, wide receiver is still in play. I think Joe Ock could have been in consideration um, before they got a Luminor. I think Brock Bowers could even be in play here to the Giants. Um, but I'm going to opt to go Romo Dunze. I do think this could be a trade-out spot, especially if somebody wanted to jump the Titans and go get Joe Alt. Joe Alt, let me clarify, is a, is a left tackle, correct? Yes, okay. I always get confused with, with the tackles and what side they're on. Let me look at that real quick. Because he's a left. Fuaga is a right. Yes. For Shanu is a right, I think. No, he is a left. So that means Latham is the right. Because I think there's two and two. Yep. And then Mims is a left. No, he is a right. My bad. He is a right tackle. He only played 200 snaps last year. No, he was hurt. And then Guyton is a right. Yes. Yes. Okay. Sorry, guys. Sorry to get sidetracked there. And then Fod Tanu, I'm still classifying. He's a cool. Uh, I mean, just go and get Troy Fatana. I'm going to trade out here, and here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have somebody jump the Titans to get a tackle. Mm, that's a tough one. Maybe the Raiders, but, but they need a right tackle and not a left. Who needs a left tackle? Who needs a left tackle? The New Orleans Saints need a left tackle who just went and got Chase Young today, which is interesting. I'm going to move up. I am. I, I, I am. They're not interested per this. But I'm going to make a big jump. I'm going to go New Orleans. We're going to move from 6 to 14. I'm going to probably say something like that. That's going to be accepted. They're going to trade 14, their future first, and a future third. Up to six. They're going to go get Joe Alt. He's going to play opposite of Ryan Ramchick. Um, 
wow, that's a good, that's a, that's one I haven't even thought about before. I do like the Raiders stream up there too. I like them to be aggressive. But Joe Alt to the Saints at six. And so now that we've picked um for the Saints, let's go look at what they've done so far this offseason. Uh like I very, very briefly mentioned a minute ago, they did just sign Chase Young today uh to a one year contract. They also went out and got Cedric Wilson after cutting Michael Thomas. They went and uh, got uh, Demario Davis on a new two-year deal because he was entering his final year, so kind of just extended him. They also went and got Willie Gay Jr. on a one-year deal to play opposite of Demario Davis, and then they also uh, kind of gave Tara Matthew a little bit of a new deal too. Um, so going to get a tackle to block for Derek Carr and Alvin Kamara and company. Um, Joe Alt to the to the Saints at six. That's the trade out. So now this becomes interesting for the Titans because they went out, they gave a bag to Calvin Ridley. Um, so let's recap their moves real quick. Tackle would still be in play here, in my in my opinion, at least. Um, but I don't think wide receiver is totally out of play here. I think Joe Alt is one hundred thousand percent the pick here if you are Tennessee. But with Romo Dunze sitting on the board, I. think think it is a possibility. However, I just think they need so much offensive lineup. Um, the Titans went out, uh, signed Mason Rudolph to be their backup to Will Levis. They went and got Tony Pollard after losing Derrick Henry. They went and got Calvin Ridley to a big contract. They also re-signed Nick Westbrook-Akina. Um, they went out and got Lloyd Cushenberry, who's going to be their center this upcoming year. Um, and then two really good, there's, these are the only defensive signings, but I think they were really good signings for them. Kenneth Murray in the linebacker room and adding Shadobie Awuzie. Um, Shadobie Awuzie, I'm not sure how you pronounce his name, but Awuzie uh, from Cincinnati, former uh, Cowboy, too, uh, to their cornerback room, which I think was very, very uh, needed. Um, I, I even think corner could be in play here uh, for them. Adunze makes the most sense. Because now you're running Odunze, uh, Ridley, and then and then you're gonna have D Hop, and maybe Traylon Burks turns into something. I don't like Chig Oconquo that much. I think Brock Bowers could even be a play. I think Cooper DeGene could be in play here. Um, but I'm gonna opt to stay with the tackle, and I'm just gonna take best available. And in my opinion, that's gonna have to be Talise Fuanga, um, out of Oregon State at seven to the Tennessee Titans. The Atlanta Falcons at eight. Obviously, um, the big move, they went out and got Kirk. Uh, Kirk Cousins will be the quarterback in the uh, NFC South for the Atlanta Falcons next year. They did go trade Desmond Ritter. Um, then they went out and got four wide receivers. Now, one was a re-sign in, um, in Cordell Hodge, um, but they went out and got Ray Ray McLeod. They went out and got Darnell Mooney, who they gave a, a three-year contract to. And then, like I said earlier, they traded Desmond to the Arizona Cardinals in exchange for Rondell Moore. I think wide receiver is completely out of the question here. I think their entire focus shifts to their defense now. Um, and I, it, it's still going to be edge for me here, I think, uh, with Dallas Turner. I just think he is significantly the best um, – Not maybe not significantly, but I do think he is the best defensive player in this class. Um, similar to the edge out of Alabama last year, Will Anderson. Um, and then on top of uh, those signings uh, that they had, they really haven't done much else. They went and re-signed uh, two, you know, lower-end depth guys. And then they also went and gave Charlie Warner a three-year contract. I'm assuming he's going to be kind of like a blocking tight end um, uh, down there in Atlanta. But, yeah, Dallas Turner's the pick at eight to Atlanta. It might end up being that until draft day. I'm not going to lie. Nine for the Bears. I do think this could be a trade out spot because they've already built up so many, you know, assets on our team. I, I think Romo Dunze could still be in play here. I think Romo Dunze is a very similar receiving, you know, type player to Keenan Allen. Keenan Allen's going to be gone after this year, more than likely, unless you give him another one year contract. He's going to be a free agent after this year. Um, oh, Romo Dunze is really intriguing me. I was thinking about trading out here. I really was. I was thinking about trading out here, but man, Romo Dunze, I like Romo Dunze. I also like Byron Murphy here. 
Chicago, I've got down for a quarterback, a wide receiver, an edge, and an interior defensive lineman. I do think Jared Verse could be in play here too. But the question is, is do they want to take – do they just want to take a guy even if they're reaching, or do they want to trade back and pick up more assets? Hmm. Hmm. The Vikings are interested in trading up. I don't think that makes sense. Because I think I like Romo Dunze to the Jets at 10 also. But I think if somebody traded up here, it would be to get Romo Dunze. Whether that is, you know, the New York Giants coming back up, um, the Pittsburgh Steelers, you know, I mean, whoever. The Baltimore Ravens, that's a big, big jump. I don't think that would happen. Or do I just want to go with the guy? I'm just going to go with the guy. I think it's the first time he's entered my top 10. It's it's going to be Byron Murphy. It's going to be Byron Murphy the second out of Texas. Guy that I really like. I've had high praise for him on my recent videos. I'm going to bring him into the top 10 now. Chicago at nine. Just take your guy and go with it. I mean, like I said, Romo Dunes was really intriguing me there to the Jets at 10. Him and Garrett Wilson together with, with Aaron Rodgers is going to be something else, man. That would be something else. Um, wow. Um, the Jets free agency recap so far real quick. Um, they've been a little active. They went out and got Morgan Moses uh, 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 in a trade for a fourth-round pick. Um, and kind of like a pick swap from Baltimore. They also went out and got Tyron Smith and John Simpson. They're bringing in three new guys to start on their offensive line with uh, uh, Joe Titman and Elijah Vera Tucker. Um, you know, John Simpson is going to play that other guard spot. And then I'm going to assume Moses and Smith are going to play tackles opposite of each other. Um, Tyrod Taylor, if they went and got as a backup quarterback, I think that was interesting. Uh, Zach Wilson is either probably going to be cut or traded. Um they also went out and got Javon Kinlaw, Isaiah Oliver, and uh, I actually don't know who this guy is, uh, Lecky Fotu. Um, so those are some interesting signs. Um, so I think wide receiver is in play there for them. I also think that if you wanted to take a tackle, you could have him sit a year. But I think with Fawaga off the board, I think mm, maybe I could still see Fashaga. I do think safety's in play too. Um, I think that could be a trade-off spot uh, for the Jets if they wanted to. Um, then the Vikings, a lot of people are saying, you know, the Vikings, they went and got 11 and 23. They're trading up. They're getting a quarterback. I would stick and pick. Remember, these videos are, 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 are my opinions. If I was the GM for all 32 NFL teams, this is what I'm doing. 30 to be exact here because the Browns and Panthers don't have a first-round pick. But I'm sticking and picking. I think it makes sense. They need a lot. I think it makes sense for them. Let's recap what they've done so far. Um, they've went out. They've had a interesting uh, free agency so far, in my opinion. They went and they got Sam Darnold, who I think in a Kevin O'Connell system with Justin Jefferson, Jordan Addison, and then their new running back, um, Aaron Jones, um, and Ty Chandler, and TJ Hawkinson, and a good offensive line, for the most part, at least. Um I think Sam Darnold is going to be fine there for a year. I really do. Let's be honest here. You're playing in a division with Green Bay, who made the playoffs last year and is borderline improved. And you're also playing in a division with Detroit, who almost went to the to the Super Bowl last year. And you're looking at Chicago, who I think Chicago is going to be somewhere between 7 and 11 wins next year. You're playing in a really tough division. Minnesota, you might end up being the last team in the division even if you go draft this rookie quarterback. Why give up the house to move to number three to draft Drake May or to draft Jaden Daniels? When you got Sam Darning play for a year, you've got pick 11 and pick 23 now. And you need a lot. I mean, I mean, Minnesota needs a corner. They need the interior of the line. They need edge depth. They need... I, Feel like they need another wide receiver. They could use another corner probably. And then now they need a quarterback too. I mean, that's that's five or six picks right there. And you've got two, four, six, eight, nine picks, three within the top 130, one right outside of the top 150, 
and next year you don't have a lot of picks. So why would I do this? And even then, 11 and 23 to move up to three, I can fill in the first two. I'm sticking and picking both these picks in Minnesota. And my first one is is interesting that their needs is listed as a tight end over there. Their first one is I'm going to continue, I think, to rock this pick. I think it's going to be Cooper to Gene. Now, if they wanted to go JJ McCarthy here, I think they could, but I'm still, I don't think, I don't think I can fit JJ McCarthy in my top top 20, unless it's maybe to Denver. But even then, I think Denver needs other things too. I think I'm going to rock Cooper to Gene. They don't really need a safety. They also just went and got Harrison Smith re signed. Um, oh, my bad. I didn't go over their, their, their uh, free agencies. My bad. They got Sam Darnold. They got Aaron Jones after releasing Alexander Matson. Uh, they re-signed Brandon Powell. They signed Trent Sherfield. Um, and then they went and gave Jonathan Grenard and Andrew Van Kinkle contracts, which I think Edge is now out of play completely for them in the first round. Uh, they went and they got Jerry Tillery and Jonathan Bullard. Um, Bullard was a re-sign. I do still think that that, that interior could improve, though. Um, and then they went and got Blake Cashman, uh, which I think is a great pickup to put beside Ivan Pace Jr., which, again, I want to let everyone know every chance I get. I tried to tell you that Ivan Pace Jr. was going to be a good linebacker, and nobody listened. Not even the NFL listened until Minnesota went and got him after the draft was over. I think it's more corner now for Minnesota. And I I guess that would – I'm going to I'm gonna say it's going to be Terry and Arnold. I do think there's a chance that Quinn Mitchell ends up being the first corner off the board now. So I'm going to go Terry and Arnold here at 11 to Minnesota. Um, 12 for Denver in play, quarterback. I think receivers in play. This went and traded Jerry Judy to the Browns. Let's recap what they've done so far in free agency. Uh, I also think centers in play. I think edge is in play. I think corners in play. I think linebackers in play. I think there's a lot of things in play. Now, obviously, um, they're probably not going to take a center this early. You're not going to take a linebacker this early. Um, so I think it would be quarterback, wide receiver, edge, and corner that you're looking at here. If you are Denver, Denver so far this offseason um, really has not done anything. They signed Cody Barton. They signed Brandon Jones. They re-signed P.J. Locke. And they signed Malcolm Roach. They haven't done – and they traded Jerry Judy. And they ate $85 million in cap for Russell Wilson. Um I do think receivers in play. I do think Brian Thomas Jr. could go this early. I really do. I think he's good. I think he's really good. I think this could be a trade-out spot for Denver. But I do think that they – I just, for some reason, I think Denver is really, really going to like Nate Wiggins. I really do. I think they're going to like Nate Wiggins a lot. I think Cooper DeGene could be in play with losing Justin Simmons. Kind of needing the safety. But I just, I really, I think Jared Burch is in play too. Ooh. I think I'm going to go Jared versus to Denver at 12. That was a late switch up in my mind, but I'm going to go Jared versus to Denver at 12. Then that leaves us another AFC West team. Um, our third one of the video already, with our last one being the last pick because they won the Super Bowl. Or will it be the last pick? You never know. Uh, the Las Vegas Raiders, I think quarterback's out of the question now for them in the first round, at least. They went and signed Gardner Minshew to a two-year contract. Um, they did go get Alexander Mattinson, which I think is an interesting running back room now. They re-signed Amir Abdullah. They said they want to rock with Zamir White. Um, and then they got Alexander Mattinson. That's just a weird running back room. They did get uh, Andre James, their center back. I think it was a big big resign for them. Uh and then the big move that they made was they went and gave Christian Wilkins an absolute bag. Um I do think that them signing Christian Wilkins takes interior defensive line out of play now here at 13. I was big with Byron Murphy going here at 13 to the Raiders. I don't think it would be Jerzon New Jerzon Newton now. I don't think QB would be in play here at 13. I think they would be between a tackle here. So they need a right tackle. Um, and I think that they could also look at edge or corner. Um, but with Olu Fashanu still sitting here, let me confirm again. My bad, guys. He is a left tackle, though. 
I don't. I still think that they would move him. I think. I think you could move him. I'm gonna go over Bashana to the Raiders. I think I've done that before. And in my head, it pictures it, it lines up. Um, so we're gonna take Olu Bashana there, um, at thirteen, um, uh, to the Raiders. Uh, I've already discussed what the Giants have done. So let's get back after they've traded back to fourteen, um, and they are considering a receiver anyways at six. They're also considering a lineman in a corner. I think that Nate Wiggins and Quinion Mitchell being here make a lot of sense to put on the opposite side of Deontay Banks. However, I do like Brian Thomas Jr. Um, at 14 to the Giants. I think that makes sense. Indy, um, first off, their big move was they went and uh, re-signed my guy, Michael Pittman Jr. They went and signed Joe Flacco, which I thought was interesting. They also signed Trey Sermon. Um. Tyquan Lewis, uh, Gennard Avery, uh, Grover Stewart, all back on re-signs, along with Zaire Franklin and Kenny Moore. Um, sorry, Zaire Franklin was an extension, my bad. Um, and Ronnie Harrison also on re-sign, and then they also brought in uh, Raquan Davis. Um, for for Indy here, I do think that I do think wide receiver can still be in play. Um, but they don't have a tight end on their roster right now. And I've discussed it before that they love their, you know, their height, weight, speed, freak, athlete guys, but they also love the SEC. Um, so this is where I'm at Brock Bowers land. He's fell in enough. I do think he's a top 10 talent in this draft. They go get Brock Bowers, tight end out of Georgia, pick 15 to the Indianapolis Colts. Um, another guy for Anthony Richardson to throw the ball to. Um, at 16, Seattle. Uh, a guy that tested good at the combine, a guy that I've had, I think, going to Seattle every time. <laughs> it's Troy Fontana, man. I just really like him at the guard position on their on their um our lads depth chart right now. They legitimately do not have a uh, uh I think it's left guard uh listed on their whole entire roster. Um, I do think Edge could still be in play here. I still think this is a good trade back spot for Seattle. Um, but I think guard, I think center. Um, if they really want to get fun with it and, you know, you need a guard or a center, they could go Jackson Powers Johnson, play him at either or. Um, I think they need a strong safety. Um, and then I think they could use Edge or, or really front seven depth in general. Um, the Jaguars at 17, they went and they got, oh, my God, who they get? Like Ronald Darby, I think, but they lost Darius Williams. So I think corner is definitely in play here. Um, and, and I also wrote down, I think, that they could use. No, they could use a corner. I think they could also use interior line and the tackle position. Um, and I think I'm going to go Cooper to Gene, but I think – I think Nate Wiggins and Quinlan Mitchell would fit there better. I'm going to go Quinlan Mitchell at 17 to the Jaguars. I think that makes sense. Uh, the Bengals have about the easiest pick in the draft right here. Um, <laughs> uh, they need a right tackle. Uh, we talked about J.C. Latham earlier, who, guess what, is a right tackle. They love their Alabama players. They love their Alabama tackles. Uh, J.C. Latham, welcome to Cincinnati. Um, at 19 for the Rams. Uh, oh, my bad. I'm sorry. I, I, I'm I lacking here. I'm so sorry. Let me recap uh, these teams that I just missed. Jacksonville acquired Mac Jones in a trade. Uh, they went and they got Gabe Davis. That was pretty big. And Devin DuVernay. Uh, they went and they got Ezra Cleveland to a little ex uh, extension, kind of. They went and they got Mitch Morse. Um, they gave the franchise tag to Josh Allen. Uh, they went and got Arik Armstead, Ronald Darby, uh, and Darnell Savage. Uh, the Bengals, the Bengals in my head haven't done a lot. They did franchise tag T. Higgins. That was pretty big, but then he requested a trade. They released Joe Mixon, forgot about that, um, and went and signed Jack, Zach Moss. Uh, they went and they got Mike Gusecki, which I think was huge, and then it kind of eliminates their tight end need, um, oh, kind of. Um, and then they went and got Sheldon Rankins. 
Uh, and they re-signed my guy, Akeem Davis Gaither, and they went and they got Von Bell and Geno Storm. Um, Cincinnati, I do think, is in play for a tackle, like I said. Um, but I also do think they're in play um, in the interior defense line also with, like, Jazan Newton there. Um, and then speaking of Jazan Newton, the Los Angeles Rams, which we are two, um, they drafted an undersized defensive uh, lineman, interior defensive lineman one time by the name of Aaron Donald, who unfortunately – uh, retired this past Friday, which is pretty big. Jazan Newton, um, you got big shoes to fill, my man. Um, I think it's a good pick though for 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 the Rams at nineteen. If Aaron Donald weren't retired, I probably would have would have looked corner there. I think I would have leaned Cooper to Gene over Nate Wiggins for the Rams. I think, um, but. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, the Rams, real quick, they did go get Jimmy G. They re-signed DeMarcus Robinson. They went and got Colby Parkinson. Um, and then the big moves for them was re-signing Kevin Dotson and also signing Jonah Jackson. Kind of uh, fills up their guard needs. Um, and then they went and got out Darius Williams, who I just talked about, left Jacksonville. And they went and got Cam Curl to play uh, strong safety. The Steelers here at 20. I, I honestly think we could trade back here. However, I also think that we could trade up and go get somebody. There is a lot of guys here, being Cooper Jean, Nate Wiggins, Jackson Powers Johnson, and Amarius Mims. I think all four of those players would interest us. Who wants to trade? It's Minnesota. Uh, we already went Terry and Arnold, though. So I think that makes sense for them. I think I want to trade up for our corner. Maybe Philly comes up and gets Nate Wiggins. No, I think I'm gonna I think I'm just gonna stick and pick here and I think it's it's gonna be the same and I'm probably gonna be that way for a good little while. It's gonna be Jackson Powers Johnson. I think by far our biggest need uh as a Pittsburgh Steelers fan is our center position. Um and I think that that's like the best possible route that you could go right there is taking Jackson Powers Johnson at twenty. The Miami Dolphins, well I've had trading out of this a few times. Um, also, oh my bad, I I am lacking on this this uh this free agents recap. The Steelers, um, we haven't done a ton. We went and got Patrick Queen. Uh, we went and got Russell Wilson and Justin Fields. Uh, maybe we did do a ton. I'm just checking. Um, yeah, we went and we we acquired Justin Fields, which I talked about earlier. Uh, we signed Russell Wilson, signed Patrick Queen. We trade, unfortunately, and this uh made us have a receiver need now. Uh, traded uh, my favorite um, receiver uh, in a long time, right up there. You can't really see it, but um, got a signed picture up there of him. Uh, Juice, gonna miss you in Pittsburgh, man. Um, to the Panthers in exchange for Dante Jackson. That's why I think corners may be out of question here in the first round. Um, and we also signed Deshaun, uh, Deshaun Elliott and re-signed Miles Killebrew. Um, and then the Dolphins here have been absolutely just like ravaged by free agency. They've lost a lot of guys, but they've also went and got a lot of guys too. Um, they got John o. Smith. I think it kind of eliminates their tight end need maybe a little bit. Uh, and then they went and got Aaron Brewer to play center for them. They re-signed Isaiah Wynn. And then they went out and got a lot of defensive guys. Shaq Barrett, uh, Neville Gallimore, uh, Jonathan Harris, Benito Jones, Deshaun Hand on a re-sign. Uh, Jordan Brooks, Anthony Walker, Kendall Fuller, Nick Needham on a resign, Jordan Poirier, uh, Cyber Neal, a lot of lot of guys. Um, I think they kind of replenished their 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 linebacking and their in their secondary room. Um, so this is going to be a trade out spot for me. In my opinion, I do think they could still use a tight end potentially. Um, which I would look more to like Jatavion Sanders second round maybe. I do think they could use a slot receiver still. Um, especially with the departure of Cedric Wilson. Um, and I think they could look at the interior of the defense line after losing Christian Wilkins. Um, however, with with Newton off the board here, I don't see that happening. I do think they could be interested in a corner still. Mm. But I think I'm going to trade out here. And Washington is wanting to trade up. Interesting. Maybe to go get a corner. And I think that makes sense. I think it does. I think Washington moves like 27 and 78 for 21. Cool. Washington comes up and they get a guy. They get a guy in Cooper Jean who I think has fallen a little too far from my taste, even though I'm not the biggest Cooper Jean fan. I think his value, though, 
in the draft is going to be skyrocketed um, because of the versatility, the, the the ability to play the outside corner, the ability to play um, safety, the ability to play nickel corner. Um, and I think that's a good trade for both sides. I don't think Miami needs a ton, um, but they pick up 78 where they can go get, you know, a tight end or a slot receiver. Um, and then they also move back there to 27, which they might do then. Who knows? Um, 22, uh, Philly, they went and they got Devontae Parker, which kind of eliminated my uh, need for a receiver if you watched my video last week. Um, but, oh, I went to the wrong division. Uh, but to discuss their their moves again, uh, if you didn't watch, did not watch my video last week, some of the stuff that they did last week, they went and they got Saquon Barkley. They uh, signed Albert O, the tight end. They gave Landon Dickerson a big extension. They went and they got Matt Hennessy, uh, and then they re-signed Brandon Graham. They got Bryce Huff. They got Zach Bond. They got Julian Aguara. Um, and then since then, they traded for Kenny Pickett. They signed Devontae Parker. Um, they signed Devin White. They signed C.J. Gardner-Johnson. Um, so some interesting moves there. I've got them down for potentially still needing a center or guard. I'm not a hundred percent on Cam Jurgens yet. Um, I do think secondary is definitely still in play for them, mainly corner, um, and then tackle to replace Lane Johnson. But with Nate Wiggins just sitting in your lap here at twenty two, I think you've got to go Nate Wiggins if you're Philly. Twenty three. Minnesota's second pick, we went Terry and Arnold, um, if you don't remember, there at 11. Uh, and I think that Leatu Latu sitting here is beautiful for them. I really do. I really do. Um, play opposite of Jonathan Grenard. You still have Andrew Van Ginkle, who's not the best, but he's solid. Because we went corner. I don't see Mims or Barton here. Um, and to be getting AD Mitchell there would be insane. I'm, I really want to take Latu here. I think it makes a ton of sense. But I was talking about him earlier. I'm gonna go JJ McCarthy there at 23 to the to the Vikings. You still start Sam Darnold at least to start the year. J.J. McCarthy sits, learns a little bit, you know, maybe adjusts to, to play and stuff like that, and then you throw him in there. J.J. McCarthy at 23 um, to the Vikings. Now let's go to the Cowboys who had have had a kind of lackluster free agency. They lost Tony Pollard. Um, uh, Leighton Van Der Esch retired. Uh, however, they did bring in Eric Kendricks. They did bring in Jordan Lewis, and then they re-signed Rico Dowdle. I think their biggest need, honestly, in my opinion, oh, they also lost Tyron Smith. Their biggest, and Tyler, to be honest, their offensive line has got to be prior to Durham one. Tackle center. I think they could bring in a wide receiver. Um, I think they could use help in the interior of the defense line. Now they're going to need help at linebacker with Leighton Van Der Esch out of there, I think. Um I think corner could be of use a little bit, but I also think a very, very slept on thing for them is their halfback position. Right now you're looking at Rico Dowdle and, and Deuce Vaughn, I'm pretty sure, as your running backs. Um, obviously, I'm not going to take a running back here at 24th. Um, however, I would look at it in the second round if I'm then a, a guy like, you know, uh, uh, a Jalen Wright or a Jonathan Brooks or a Blake Corum or a Trey Benson, somebody like that. However, um, with Tyron Smith out of there, I think Amarius Mims is definitely the pick here. Um, bring him in at 24 uh, out of Georgia. Amarius Mims to tackle uh, to the Dallas Cowboys. 25, the Packers. They are in an interesting spot here. Um, to recap what they've done in free agency so far, they have lost some guys. Um, but they have went out and they've got Josh Jacobs, uh, which is big. Um, and they got Xavier McKinney, which I think was also big. I do still think that a safety could be in play for them here. Um, but also with losing John running, I think guard could be in play. And that's why uh, shooting up from 31 to 25, not really shooting up, shooting up, uh, but coming up from 31 uh, to 25, a uh, guy that I've picked to San Fran, and I've liked picking the San Fran a lot, Graham Barton. I'm going to take him here at 25. Um, 
uh, to the Green Bay Packers to to kind of replace John Runyon. I do think that maybe they opt to not go guard and they play – what's it, Sean Ryan or something like that? It's the guard's name. Maybe they play him um, there uh, for a year, and they could go Tyler Newbin, who is not my safety one. But I do know a lot of people like him going there at 25 to the Packers. But I'm going to go Graham Barton, uh, the current – tackle out of Duke however I do think he could play tackle I do think he could play guard um you know losing David Bakhtiari is a, is a is a thing also uh for Green Bay I don't know uh 26 Tampa Bay I can't let him fall any farther it's got to be Leatu Latu um out of UCLA again if Houston was sitting there at 23 I think D'Amico Ryan would be foaming at the mouth to get Leatu Latu in there um you know, maybe they even trade it. No, I'm probably not. But uh, uh, Tampa Bay, their corner room is bad, but their edge room isn't that much better. Um, and with really no corners, no first round corners, in my opinion, sitting on the board still. Uh, maybe Kool Aid McKinstry comes in there. I do like Mike Sanders still a lot. TJ Tampa, I like a lot. Kamari Lasseter, I like. Um, and then Ennis Rakestraw has kind of fallen a little bit. I was never really the biggest on him, anyways. Um, but yeah, at 27, Miami, after trading back, I think that them getting AD Mitchell would be just something else. I really do. I think I'm gonna go AD Mitchell. He's not a slot receiver, but dude, you've got AD Mitchell, Jalen Waddle, and Tyree Kill. Oh my god. With Mike Medano's calling a play. And you got Raheem Mostert and and and, and uh Devon A Chain. Wow. Oh my goodness. Oh, my bad on Tampa Bay also. Let me I'm sorry, guys. Tampa Bay recap real quick. They went and they re-signed Baker Mayfield to the big, big uh contract. Um, they went and re-signed Mike Evans. Uh they went out and they got uh Sua Opeta. The guard, uh, I think it was in Philly actually. Um, and they re-signed Greg Gaines, they re-signed Levante David, they went and they got Bryce Hall, they went and they got Jordan Whitehead, and they uh also franchise tagged Antoine Wilco Jr., which I think was huge. Buffalo, what has Buffalo done? Well, Buffalo has had uh like I feel like they've like taken one step backwards to take one step forward, or one step forward to take one step backward, whatever how you want to say it. They went and they re-signed Mitch. Well, not re-signed, but they signed a guy that uh, formerly was in Buffalo and Mitch Trubisky to be their backup quarterback. Uh, they went and they got Matt Collins and Curtis Samuel. I do still think receiver could be in play here, but giving Curtis Samuel a three or thirty million dollar contract makes me think that they're not going to go receiver anymore. They gave Deion Dawkins a big extension. Um, they re-signed AJ Epineza. They re-signed Quan Jones. They signed Nick Morrow. They re-signed uh, Teron Johnson. To an extension, or sorry, not resign, but they gave him a big extension and they resigned Cam Lewis and Taylor Rapp. Um, with that being said, I think the interior of their offensive line is in play here. Uh, I do still think they could go wide receiver. I do still think corner or, or free safety could be in play here. So maybe Tyler Newbin. Tyler Newbin is one of the strongest safety out there. Well, I feel like Tyler Newbin is more strong safety. I'm going to trade out here. And I'm going to make this really interesting. And this is an idea that I've kind of, uh, you know, looked at and stuff like that. Denver still needs a quarterback. And I know you're going to say, well, why didn't you just take J.J. McCarthy at 13? Well, oh, my God. When is Denver's next pick? Well, never mind. Denver might not be able to come up here. Maybe Denver goes 76 in a future second, 28. What does that work? Except Denver moves 76 in the future second. I don't know how accurate that would be. 28. They're going to come into the first round, and they're going to go get my guy, my guy, Michael Penix Jr. out of Washington uh, to, to sling the ball for them this year. Um, And the Buffalo moving back, Um, yeah, that was a very, very big move back. They don't need a ton. Um. I do know that they like Keon Coleman, and Keon Coleman is slipping um, in in a lot of drafts. So maybe you can still get Keon Coleman your second round pick, um, whatever number that is. Um, and then to round out the the you know the first round here, last four picks, we're going to Detroit um, team that was a few minutes away, pretty much 
um, uh, from the Super Bowl last year. Um, they went out. They re-signed Don Peter Jones. They re uh, they gave Graham Gas Glasgow an extension. Um, they signed Marcus Davenport, DJ Reader. Uh, they acquired Carlton Davis. They re-signed Emmanuel Mosley. They signed Amik Robinson. I think that the corner um spot is maybe out of the position here. Oh, I just I just completely messed it up. I think the corner position is is out of play here now. I well, maybe not fully out of play, um, but I maybe think that they might not opt to go there. They do need a guard. I just don't think there's a guard that would go here. The guards that we're looking at, you know, my highest ranked guard is is Christian Haynes out of uh, Connecticut. Also, like Cooper Beebe, I know he's falling a lot out of Kansas State. Um, and then Christian Mahogany out of Boston College isn't too bad either. The tackles that I think could play guards, Troy Fontana and Graham Barton, both also off the board here. I think Jordan Morgan could maybe play guard too. Um, so I'm going to have another trade. Um, and this time it is yet another team that I think can use a quarterback because there's just lack of talent sitting here at the back end of the first round now. Another team that could use a quarterback. Um, and that is the New York Giants. I think that they would be in on this. I really do. I wouldn't be surprised. The Panthers have been kind of aggressive. The Panthers came up to come get a receiver here. I think Edge could be in play for Detroit also. I didn't even think about that. Um... Do the Giants not? Oh, because the Giants, never mind. I was thinking the Giants saw their second. Never mind. I'm Scratch the trade. Scratch the trade. They don't have their second either because of the Brian Burns trade. Who wants to come up here? Who wants an edge? Who wants an edge? Who needs edge? Who needs edge help? Baltimore needs edge help, but that's not where I'm going to go with that pick. Who needs edge help that I did not take an edge player for? Chicago, um, New England. Arizona's already traded up. I'm not going to do that again. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring New England up here, which is an idea that I've also flirted with before. Um, them coming into the back in the first round and taking JJ McCarthy if they traded back from three. Took a tackle. Oh, I'm putting my ideas out there. I think this time. I think this would be a uh, like a 34 and 103 for 29, probably. New England comes up and they get a guy that I just keep on forgetting about because he's always so low on this ranking and I don't like it. It's Chop Robinson out of Penn State, and I think that makes a lot of sense. I think that could make a lot of a lot a lot of sense for New England. Um, Baltimore at 30. Um, what has Baltimore done this all season? <laughs> They got Derrick Henry, which is terrifying as a Steelers fan. Um, and then they also went out and got um, Josh Johnson, which was interesting. Uh, they went and they re-signed Nelson Aguilar, um, and they gave Justin Matabike that big uh, extension. They also re-signed Brent Urban and Malik Harrison. Um, Baltimore is probably looking at a tackle guard, and there is a big – uh, talk about that they really, really, really like Jordan Morgan. Um, and so I'm going to say Jordan Morgan because I think that they could use a guard or a tackle, and I think he could play both, either or, whatever they want. Um, we're going to bring in Jordan Morgan here at 30. Um, and then the San Francisco 49ers really round in this draft out real quick. San Francisco 49ers. They went and gave some guys extensions like Colton McKivitz, went and re-signed some guys like John Feliciano, Chris Conley. Um, but they made uh, some big, big signings. Um, they went and got Leonard Floyd and your two Gross Montos, both edge players. Um, they acquired Malik Collins in a trade. They got Jordan Elliott. Um, and they also got Devontae Campbell. I think Edge is completely out of the question here at 31 for San Fran if they were if it was before. Um, they also went and got Isaac Idiom. Um, I think corner could be in play, but I'm still on the Tyler Guyton train. Um, Oklahoma, they have an Oklahoma tackle right now in uh, Trent Williams. You can learn under Trent Williams. 
Um, and if Trent Williams is out the door within the next two to three years, which might be the 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 uh, thing with retirement, I don't think they would release him, right? Um, and then KC. KC, I like Tyler Guyton at 32, um, but it, it's unfortunate there. I think that a position that hasn't really been talked about with KC is corner. Um, if Legereus Sneed is to be traded, I do think tackles in play here. I think that you could bring Kingsley uh, Suatamatia, Suatama Taia, I think as I say, Kingsley Suamatia. Um, out of BYU in here to play tackle. Um, I do think wide receiver is still in play. Also, by the way, I'm sorry, I forgot again. Um, Kansas City so far, they went and they got Marquise Brown. It was only a one-year contract. They do still have Rasheed Rice, obviously. And then they've also got Kadarius, Tony, and Sky Moore, which I think they're out on both of those guys. Um, they went and they got Irv Smith. They re-signed Chris Jones to the big contract. They re-signed Derek Nottie. Um, they re-signed Drew Tranquil. I think a linebacker could even be in play. Um, but if you trade Legereus Need, I think corner's definitely in play. I think it would probably be it would probably be Kool-Aid McKinstry. But I think a guy like they need a big receiver though. Is that Keon Coleman? Is Keon Coleman a good fit here? I think he could be. Um, but I'm going to go corner, um, here for Kansas city. I know it's a weird pick, but this is essentially just saying in a theoretical world that luxurious need got traded. Um, but they like corners that can tackle. Um, and I'm going to sneak, I know, uh, my, my buddy Connor is going to be really happy about that one. He is a Chiefs fan and a Missouri football fan. And, um, I've been hating on Ennis Rake Straw, and I'm going to continue to hate on Ennis Rake Straw, but I'm going to sneak him into the first round, local pick at 32 to the Kansas City Chiefs. Ennis Rake Straw Jr. in the corner out of Missouri um, to step into Legereus Sneed's shoes in a theoretical theoretical world where he gets traded just because lack of picks there. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they trade out. Somebody comes up, gets maybe a receiver, or gets a corner. Um and I wouldn't even be I, – I honestly wouldn't be surprised if they went linebacker there with a guy like Edron Cooper or Peyton Wilson. Um, but that's going to be the draft. Here it is. You can look at it real quick. Caleb Williams, Marvin Harrison, Drake May, Jane Daniels, Malik Neighbors, Joe Walt, Talisa Fulaga, a bunch of trades happening. Um, my Steelers take Jackson Powers Johnson at 20. Um, my biggest follower, I think, is Nate Wiggins all the way down to 22. Um, Leotu Latu, I do think, is so really good. But I really like this draft. I really do. I'm going to hope y'all did too. If y'all did, uh, make sure to leave a like. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you never came across it. I do a uh, weekly video every Tuesday at 12 o'clock noon. Drop to 12 o'clock noon every Tuesday. That's the goal. Um, I know I missed two weeks ago, but I was sick. I mentioned it in the last video. Um, but again, I like this. I like this draft a lot. Um, but I've been yapping for a long time. <laughs> um, but uh, all for good reasons. And um, yeah. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, and I'll see you next time. Peace.